So here's a little more information about the flipped classroom and incorporating Bloom's taxonomy into the flipped classroom model so that you know where most of your time should be spent in your recording and when, what should be spent on during your live sessions. So once again, here is a graphic of what the traditional face-to-face -face model of education is, where the lower levels of Bloom's taxonomy are done in the classroom in a group setting with the teacher uh, spending most of their time on the lowest levels of Bloom's taxonomy. And then we send the kids home to do homework or projects, et cetera, without your help. And those tend to be the higher level of Bloom's taxonomy and they need a lot of help during that time. So what happens is, is that in the flipped classroom, we change that mindset and this can be done in a face-to-face -face model or in the online setting that we find ourselves in now, where at home uh, with a pre-recorded session, um, you or a directed Google Classroom assignment, they're doing the individual work before they come to class. And this is where they're getting the background, background knowledge on vocab, comprehending that knowledge and applying it in some way into what's called an entrance ticket into your live session. And that holds them accountable for doing that work before coming to class and uh, allows you to know that they, they spent time on that work before. You can also tell by the questions they're asking when they come to class whether or not they did the pre-work. And it allows you to redirect the student back to the pre-work in order to continue on with the group work that is taking class during your live session, taking place during your live session. And it is the group work, the time that you're spending with the students in your live session online or in your face-to-face -face in in, when you're back in the classroom, that you are on the higher levels of Bloom's taxonomy, where you are spending time applying that knowledge and analyzing that knowledge that eventually the students can evaluate and create something, which is our ultimate goal for the, them to create a product to evaluate their own learning and apply it into a new situation. So this is a different graphic of Bloom's taxonomy that um, is new to me. And I was really excited to see this graphic and learn more about it. So I wanted to share it with you. And that is the kite structure. So normally we see Bloom's taxonomy in a triangle, but the uh, creator and one of the, the brains behind the flipped learning model has looked at Bloom's taxonomy through a kite structure. And this is how he, he has presented the information. And that is, it still goes up in levels from knowledge to creation. There's no new levels, but the shape of the kite directs your attention to the middle of the taxonomy. And he says that in the flipped model, um, as whether you're doing it in person, face-to-face -face, or online, the majority of your time spent with the students should be on the application of their knowledge and the analysis of their knowledge in, when you, they are with you because that is where your strength to be their partner in learning and understanding the information and having you there is the best because if they're home by themselves trying to do this and they have a question, they can't necessarily raise their hand and ask you or in a face-to-face -face classroom, uh, ask for help. So again, once um, the example shows is that the knowledge and comprehension levels are outside of the kite, they're down below. This is done at home uh, with a standalone Google classroom assignment, a video that you're showing, et cetera. I have some examples of what that can look like. So um, when you are doing the bottom levels of the uh, taxonomy, what you need to focus on is this is what they're going to be doing at home without you. So this is a lot of the stuff that takes up time during a regular class session that you can eliminate because they're doing it at home. This can be your videos, your readings. If you're going to create a slide presentation with your notes or your lesson, any Thing that you would normally do in class to build those three levels of the Bloom's taxonomy into your lesson can be done at home and they can be done over multiple days. It does not have to be done in one day. And the way that you hold the students accountable to this is that you plan an entrance ticket 
so that they come to class prepared. And if they don't have the correct answer to that entrance ticket, or uh, if it was a question or a survey, or if you hid an object in your presentation, or uh, they had to give the answer to number 10 on a worksheet uh, that they had to do prior to coming to class and type it into something, then you know that uh, they haven't done that pre-work and you send them back to do the pre-work before they can engage with you. Now, when they are with you in a face-to-face -face situation or online um, in, in the, to do the higher levels of Bloom's taxonomy, this is what it looks like. So in your group session, when you're online, or if you're face-to-face, -face, you're focusing on the higher levels of the taxonomy because you're there to help. And your live session can be spent with them doing the individual work that you give them, but you're there for them to ask questions. You're there to give them feedback. It's as if you're walking around the classroom and looking at their work right then and there. And what's very, very important to this is if you're planning an assignment that they have to do during class, they need to turn it in that day or with a timeline if you're doing a, a multi-day project that's going to end in a, a bigger thing. So if these are little pieces to a bigger project and you need to plan that accordingly and be transparent with them with due dates, etc. But it's during this time that the, the most of your learning, the meat of your instruction, the meat of their uh, uh, conversations, your, your group discussions, your group work, all that's going to be happening in your live session. So I hope that this helps you with understanding the flip model. Please feel free to share this presentation with your students and explain it to them so that they have a better understanding of what is going to be happening if you are flipping your classroom. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.